to be the 17th of August, year 2023, and I'm so much delighted to be back onto the Nutrition Spot. You're so much welcome. This is Bethan TV for you, and my name is Gifty Nakainga. We're just going to have, um, I think, a wonderful time of discussion here because I feel like most of us, being that it is the middle of the month, we tend to cut down a bit on our expenses and we would want to not spend a lot especially maybe on food so we try to find out cheaper cheaper options yeah so today i want us to put a lot of emphasis on those cheaper options of so we want to look at those cheaper cheaper options some of you will be out there and then they are like to go we're going to understand why we really need to be very very careful because we're emphasizing health care for our health tomorrow and we're emphasizing that each one of us has to be really so much responsible about what they eat because you are exactly what you eat allow me welcome my guests in the studio i'm so much honored to have uh, beautiful damali anita and also uh the only gentleman tonight on the show that is Ernest. and uh, i want to welcome Ernest first to i feel like asking him uh, about a topic of discussion tonight as we're going to discuss the street foods and street foods and how they impact our health in terms of uh, the non-communicable diseases how do they contribute to the non-communicable diseases do you at one time fall victim yes um, so i think that is very obvious hey you know, you be under the economy, so <laughs> when you think about, let's say, uh, a cooked meal, let's say, matoke, steamed everything, then you'll be like, but time, time is not enough. So you get something on the street, you eat, you run and do something else, so yes. Okay, I'm so that sure. means we're not having angels in the studio. They have also fallen victims of this street are eating like they go into the streets and buy things on the street. So I think, okay, before I completely say, could it be the same thing? Or for her, she only goes to Cafe Javas or in those big restaurants to have her food from there. Do you also fall a victim? No, get a no good idea, Johnny, go straight. Definitely. Oh. I'm also a victim. I buy chips, I buy maize, <laughs> I buy gonja. Once in a while, you can't cook all the time. Yeah, you look at going to Cafe Javas, a plate of chips is 30,000. On the roadside, it's just 2.5. So <laughs> you gauge and you want to save the money, you know? 2.5 and 30,000, there's some money you're remaining with. So you would rather buy chips on the roadside and they, and they taste different, surprisingly. Yeah. Thank you so much. I extend my warm welcome to each one of you that is watching the Nutrition Sports. And our topic of discussion tonight is going to be very amazing. We are looking at street foods and the non-communicable diseases. Well, um, my guests in the studio are going to break down this, the non-communicable diseases. I think we've overheard the NCDs and uh, most of us are, uh, I would say, victims of this. And But now some of us do not know that we can also become victims of the non-communicable diseases. So the street foods we can really understand because uh, I feel like even today there is someone that is on the road buying chips or buying a, a low legacy but let's first understand the non-communicable diseases. Ernest, to you, break this down to Ines the communicable, and then we're talking of the non-communicable. What are the non-communicable, and what is the difference between the communicable and the non-communicable? So, for someone to understand this concept of non-communicable diseases, you should first understand what communicable is, the word communicable. So communicable comes from communication. So as, as humans, for one to we, we communicate through speaking, though I'm speaking mm -hmm. to everyone. So for diseases, they communicate by spreading from one person to another. To another person. Yes. So when someone says non-communicable, it means this disease does not spread from one person to another. It's, it comes from your lifestyle, the way you live. It doesn't spread from one person to another person. Okay. So, when you the way you live your life, let's say you're always there, you're enjoying alcohol, alcohol beer, ne? those cold things. Eh? Mm. So you're always enjoying it every day. It is nice, but when you do a lot, there are effects, there are, there are consequences to every action in life. So 
if you continue bad healthy bad bad living practices, the result is not good. Thank you so much. And maybe, Damali, um, you can take us through what are some of the examples of these non-communicable diseases. The examples we have are the cancers, that these are abnormal cells that go into the body and damage other tissues. Then you also have diabetes, these are uncontrolled blood sugars in the body. Uh, then you also have, we have chronic respiratory diseases, for example, asthma, that affect physical inactivity. They also bring about difficulties in breathing. Then you also have hypertension that affects the blood vessels and also the heart muscles. So it affects the distribution of blood in the body. Then you also have kidney diseases, for example, kidney stones, kidney failure. Mm, yes, those are some of the examples I can give. So um, maybe we can end as we're going to understand the relationship between the two, but we believe that uh, for Many years, okay, maybe we shall get to understand maybe how many years or the kinds of statistics uh, that we have that uh, uh, we having street foods contribute to the NCDs and us having to understand the health burden that has surfaced in our country, Uganda, or maybe even beyond Uganda. So what is that relationship that we're having between the street foods and then also the non-communicable diseases? So for, for you to understand this, this whole relationship, you have to know what is in the street foods I'm eating. So most street foods, you'll find that they are high in fat, unhealthy fat on top of that. So if, if you're always having high fat in your diet, chances are that these diseases will attack you very fast, like uh, hypertension, high blood pressure. Mm. If you're always eating this, this fat that is, you know, okay, street foods, they usually cook. They reuse that fat many times. And the more they reuse that fat, that fat, it ceases to be fat and some other compounds start to build up that are not good for your body. I feel like I would want my viewer actually really to understand because now if you're emphasizing street foods, while you're more to Ali may be a wero, a masaka, and a gum, but then you're not a tina, you're street. Street is the mukampala. So if we say street foods, to what to take, uh, like what do we mean exactly? Street foods are foods that are sold by vendors or hawkers anywhere, either in public places, on the roadside, in parks, it is still a street food and they sell them in food carts, maybe uh, a truck. So those are all street foods. In the market, they are all street foods. Or oh, even in the market? Yeah. So anything that you buy? In a buy casero, it's on the roadside, it's a street food, yeah. Should it be anything that is cooked? or it has to be even when it's not? It can be uncooked as well, because also uncooked, you find that they get their germs that go th onto it, like the tomatoes. So it can be either cooked or uncooked. Thank you so much. So, Anis, you were mentioning Nogamba, and, and then you, s you mentioned and said that uh, these foods are high in fats. What are some of these uh, examples of foods that are high in fats and they are, in one way or the other, affect our health? So, okay, street foods. I could say another name is Emeriokuku. Okay, Emeriokuku. I hope you, hope you understand that. Yes, Emeriokuku. Direct mm -hmm. translation. Mm -hmm. So, you will find that when you look at most of these foods, most of them are deep fried, samosas, cassava, oh. even you see chapati, they use oil. So these foods, the, the fat itself is what will, the fat they use to fry, also adds onto the fat content in the food already. The fat that they use to, to fry, fry. Yes, yes, they the use foods. oil, mm. they use cooking oil or any other fat. What's the problem with this oil? Because I feel like it's the same oil that we use at home. It is reused. So if you're to look reused. at normal oil and the color of the oil they are using in to, to fry the street foods, it's tending to black. And they fry chips, they fry meat, they fry chicken in it. So it is mm -hmm. a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, then they you find the they put sausages, oil. they put kebabs, they put like, it's a whole mess. Yeah. So there's exchange of ingredients then it is too much the, the the chicken will change the color of the of the oil then you bring in fries then you bring in it's a whole lot 
So that means, okay, for them they use um, oil that is re they reuse it for each each and everything almost. So she they keep they use yeah. it till they did. They don't they just discard. add, no, add yeah, a they cup. Add. They add a cup. Just they don't change the oil. And usually that oil, when they're using it, you'll see smoke, eh? black smoke, yeah. and that's that's already dangerous. It's a sign. What are some of the dangers that uh, are likely to surface if we? maybe we keep consuming such foods that are being um, prepared with these kinds of oils yes so the first the first thing i could say is contamination food poisoning if 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 you eat that oil that has been overused the first thing you'll get is a stomach upset that's the first thing stomach upset so yeah maybe my friend can you can stomach upset and diarrhea dysentery because the body is not is not taking in what is right for it. Like this, it has other additives in it. Mm. Some street foods also have preservatives, like in the market. So you find that it's a whole mess to the body to deal with those additional ingredients in the body. So it has to find a way of fighting it. So in that way, it mm. comes up with other complications. Thank you so much, Damali, and thank you so much, Anis, to our viewers that have just joined us. This is the Nutrition Spot, and we are looking at the relationship between the street foods and the non-communicable diseases. We've mentioned a number of the non-communicable diseases, including the cancers, diabetes, hypertension, and so many other conditions. And well, we see that they have a very big health burden onto our country, Uganda, and also on individuals. And we see that over the past few decades, the prevalence of the non-communicable diseases has been on the rise, and it has created a significant burden on the different individuals. So now we want to really understand and would want to give highlights. I, I mean, as some people out there and they're like, we can't get rid of this. We can't do away with street foods. But do we have any better solutions towards these street foods? For example, Osango Mutunga Sika Ebiokulia, Emotoka Weita Wenyini. So the dust, you feel like it's directly going into those particular aids. And if someone comes to buy, they'll just buy and consume there and then. Osango Banaba Fumbo Mchere, Kukubo, Ngat. But they don't wash their hands, they do not. So how best can we, is there any way that we can have these street foods like really uh, packaged well for them to be good for the consumer? There is a way. So if you're the person selling the food, you look at the preparation, then you also look at the handling. Then nowadays they look at the packaging as well. So it's better you put them in a paper bag to absorb that oil than putting it in a cavera. Uh, then we also avoid using plastics for packaging. Then you also cover the cooked street foods. I think it would be a better solution to eat. Honest. Yeah, so when you okay, when you're buying street foods, eh, there's there's this thing that let's say there's a store here, there and there. Then you see that this store has more people, the other one doesn't have people. It is always wiser to buy the one with, with more people because <laughs> you don't know the reason why the other ones are not, they're not getting customers. Uh. Chances are their food is not good, it's contaminated. Then also, um, you, should, uh, you should ask the people around, what is the best food I can eat that is not going to cause a lot of problems? Then um, also, maybe you can... Uh, the best option actually would be cooking for yourself, if you can. If you can. Yes. But if you can't, you should um, get married. Well, if you can't, there, there are other options. You can get, um, let's say, okay, let me just phrase it like this. Instead of buying food on the road, it is better to buy food from an established place, however small the restaurant may be. Okay. It may be a better option than street food. Thank you so much. And I feel passing this question that what role do unhealthy fats and sugars and excessive salt play in uh, increasing the risk of the non-communicable diseases among the frequent consumers of these street foods? We have the sugars, the salts, and also the fats. What role do they play in this? Yeah, so fats, I'm going to start with fats. So fats, if your body cannot use the fat you take in, it will begin to store it within itself. So when your fat stores get full, it will store the, that fat within your blood vessels. So 
your blood vessels will get narrower. Now, when that happens, high blood pressure will arise and mm. those non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular diseases that affect your heart and uh, blood vessels. Then uh, salt, salt, salt uh, is, it is made of sodium chloride. So mm. sodium is, um, it's, it's a mineral. But when you eat, when you take a lot of it, it will concentrate your blood and your blood will take in more water from your body. So it will increase the volume. And when the heart pumps with the same energy it was pumping with a lesser volume, mm -hmm. the pressure will increase. All that high blood pressure, uncommunicable diseases, all that. Damali, do we have foods in particular that contribute to weight gain and also obesity from the street foods that we consume? Yes, we do. We have chips because they are lo they are lot so they have a lot of fat. Then we also have chicken. We also have sausages, the deep fried sausages, mm -hmm. because of the fighting them. Then I also say, maybe those are the major ones that I can give chips, chicken and sausages. And also we've seen people that uh, someone will tell you, I feel like I don't like the f eating from home. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. they'll be like, it's, it's really sweet. And I, I think, I'm thinking because of the, the kinds of the, the portion sizes they give, do they contribute to the appetite? What could be the reason that's why someone would forego food from home and want to have food from the streets? Okay, this is what I think what happens. Eh? So street food, people usually eat it as a snack. It's in between, they've eaten food elsewhere but then they said, ah, I feel a bit hungry. Let me, let me add something. So then they get the street mm, food. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's what mainly disturbs people. And um, I don't know what re they really put because <laughs> uh, street food. <laughs> the dust. Maybe the dust adds some ingredients Sweetener. to the food. The mm. cartel for Rolex. Maybe it mm. also adds something to the Rolex. We can't tell because they are addictive. You can't say that I'm over it. It's so uh. addictive to everyone. It's very addictive. Very addictive. You and can't stay from it. I know. I know. You also mentioned a bit of um, poor handling of food. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you might find when the food is ready. For example, if you're going to buy cassava, or gendo kugula mayuni kukubo, or sangre de baga fumbi, or baka solinga, be ready, we be there, be ready. And maybe sometimes, or in the Utamanya, you have a fumbi, you have a fumbi at here, mumazichi, or baby, be a naku maker, and coke mazawa bangachi. So, what is that kind of advice you can give to this consumer? To when they are going to buy these kinds of foods, which we are not taking on board, like which kind of advice if it comes to the proper handling of you, the foods? You can't ask the person giving to you that how did you cook it. Mm -hmm. That was the presentation. You look at the fingernails. You look at the way they are dressed. You look at the area where they are preparing the food from. Like then you also feel like if you buy it, you can feel the taste of the food that it has stayed longer than the fresh food. Because so I, tell. I mean, okay, we are trying to look out to how to curb the, um, the increasing health burden if it comes to the non-communicable diseases. And I feel like and maybe we've not put in a lot of work to wanting to stop all these mm -hmm. non-communicable diseases. Or maybe we do not even know how much uh, burden we are putting on ourselves. So what could be that one thing that you would tell us nutrition-wise that we need to keep in mind if it comes to proper feeding? Why would I have to choose another option that is not the street foods? You talked about the addiction, and I agree. They are very addictive. But what else can I opt for, and how can I deal with the addiction if it comes to these kinds of foods? Yeah, so the addiction, maybe, it's really hard to fight. Uh, like any other addiction, it's hard to fight. But... Self-control. Yeah, you can learn some of these <laughs> recipes. Then you, you can try these things out yourself. You talk to them. Uh, you can try to cook yourself and um, you figure out what they're adding to that food that makes it so nice instead of going there every time yes just about self-control like you try mm. to control yourself 
like give a okay give a limit that into in like twice a week I'll be eating the street foods then other days I prepare my own they're not so bad because wouldn't be uh, repeat that half a week okay you do a timetable huh? like you you do okay i would say it's self-control <laughs> you give a measure to yourself uh -huh. like twice a week i'll have to eat the street foods then other days i can prepare my own food it is just about self-control i would say it's all about self-control. Yeah. I wish each one of us can have that kind of self-control. Uh, if you are watching us on Facebook, thank you so much. We are Betha NTV Uganda. And if you are watching us on YouTube, Betha NTV Uganda. Thank you so much. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter as Betha NTV Uganda. But if you want to be a part of our discussion tonight, we can. You can use the number that is 078 six zero five zero and seven six two you can call us you can whatsapp us and let's get to know what is your mind like i know some of you are like over police you know over but give us what your mind is about this um the street foods and how best we can have them consumed and also reduce on the burden of the non-communicable diseases. The number is 7860 and Call us, send us our WhatsApp, those that are watching us on YouTube. I'll be able to go there and read your messages. Make sure you let us know where you are watching us from and also what is your contribution like on tonight's discussion? We're just going to get into a break, but then we're going to come back with a little more on the, the street foods and on the non-communicable diseases. You're watching Nutrition Sport. We'll be right back after the break. Uh, there are so many reasons as to why each one of us would want to enjoy a piece of our street food. And some of the reasons is because it's really, really, really very cheap. <laughs> and you know cheap things are sometimes very expensive and costly health-wise actually. And uh, Anita told us um, when you were starting the show that you can find a street food at around 2 5 And then the same exact, maybe it's chips. If you go to uh, somewhere in a restaurant, you're going to get it at 35K, and yet here yeah, you can have it at 2,500. So that means if you keep eating your chips of 2,500, you're saving much more than going into a restaurant and, and paying around 30K, thousand. So that is because they are really cheap. And also, they are not time consuming. We feel like we're not spending a lot of time on the street foods. And also, we feel safe seeing people preparing them there and then. I mean, there and then. You feel safe somehow. But we also believe they are a threat to us. Health-wise, we mentioned a number of non-communicable diseases that are being imposed on us because of us consuming the street foods. And now we want to look at the role of nutrition in eradicating all the kind of uh, impact that street foods bring on our health. So with our nutritionists in the studio, that is Damali Anita and also Ganze Ernest, we want to look at the role of nutrition in uh, curbing the health burden that is brought onto us by the street foods that we consume on a daily. I'll start with Anita. Yeah. Initially you told me you also a victim. Okay. 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 But nutrition wise, what is the role of nutrition in this? The role of nutrition, I would say nutrition uh, encourages encourages us to have a balanced diet and variety. But for street foods, you cannot have a variety and you cannot have a balanced diet. They cannot give you chips. Then they put for you uh, the right amount of vegetables. They just put like a pinch of vegetables. Then portion control. You cannot control what you eat. But if you're to prepare the food yourself, you can know that I prepared such amount of rice. Then I put I prepared such amount of meat. But for street foods, you can't tell that this is the portion I ate. You keep on because they are addictive, you keep on eating, so you cannot tell. Then I would also say for, for, for nutrition, it also helps us, like, it encourages, encourages us to have the, the fats and salts from 
natural oils, for example, nuts and fish oils. That's what I could say. Thank you so much. Ernest uh, initially talked about the salts. He was emphasizing the salts, the sugars, and then the fats. Let's look at the role of nutrition in all this. So usually when you're buying street food, the, that fat that you take, we consider it as unhealthy because it's, most of it is, is saturated and it will, it will build up within your vessels. So it is better to eat healthy fats. So Healthy fats, I'll just give the sources because it's, it, it will be easier if you know the sources. So, it's okay. Uh, fish, fish is a good source of uh, these, these, these healthy fats. Uh, chicken is a good source. Uh, we have uh, legumes like uh, groundnuts, beans, those, those ones. Yeah, they are good sources of this healthy fat which won't build up in our blood vessels and bring about uh, these uh, non-communicable diseases. Thank you so much. Uh, if you look at uh, some of these non-communicable diseases, that is like uh, diabetes and then hypertension, they really restrict salt intake. And if you look at a number of these street foods, there is a lot of salt addition in here. Uh, so what could be the best way, for example, and we've, we've also had people or we have people that are already maybe diabetic, they're hypertensive, but still they're the same people that um, line up to get a Lolex. They are the same people that line up to buy the chips and whatsoever they can buy on the street. What is your advice to someone that is already hypertensive or diabetic and then to someone that is maybe prone to these non-communicable diseases if it comes to salt intake? Uh, there, among street foods, there are foods that where salt is not added, uh, like gonja, um, maize, maize so you can go for those options that actually do not have any salt then um nutrition you, in your nutrition you should know who you are and what you need if uh, if your nutritionist has told you that do not take salt it's better to stay away from so from uh, street foods because you you don't know how much salt has been added so it is safer to stay away from them if you are diabetic or uh, Hypertensive. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've seen maybe, I've seen many people, maybe I also see myself, that when you're having this straight food, it's really hard for you to concentrate on um, maybe be like, I need to rehydrate, I need to maybe take lots of water. But what you do, you're going to buy the chips of um, 2K and then add on a soda. And then, if you like, you want to eat again, you do the same thing. Like that. So, but you've always told us that we need to rehydrate and rehydrate and rehydrate. So, what do you have to say about that? Because if someone is out there and then they are not ready to stop consuming the street foods, how best, what are some of the other additions that we can add onto the street foods to help boost our health? Uh, I would encourage whoever is eating the street foods to do enough physical activities like you do gymming, you run around, then you also do more of hydration to prevent kidney stones and to prevent UTIs for women. Hmm. Yeah, so it's something I could say. Yeah, it's also advisable for, it's advisable that you carry your own uh, water source instead of waiting to buy it's when you eat. Eh? It's better you always carry a bottle of water because uh, our body is made up of mainly water, so you have to take really a lot of water. Okay, we've also had conditions like um, Anita mentioned about the portion control. That um, if if you eat a lot of sweet foods, it's hard for you to control the portion to get to note that this is how much I've eaten or this is how much I need. And we see a number of conditions like. Um, Brimia also maybe it could be the other anorexia that someone really doesn't want to eat But now if this person really really wants to eat how best can they have the portion control done even when they are stuck to the street foods um, It's hard to really pull, up, pull, pull off the portion control when you're doing street foods because Okay, when you're buying something that is packed you you can know how much grams of what you're eating but street foods are just going to count for you. Gonja, <laughs> satulukumi. You don't know what you're eating. You don't know how, how much. Many grams in there? Uh, Gonja. You, you don't know what it is going to do to you, that amount. So 
If you can buy something packed, it would be better because you can read what is there. Uh, Anita mentioned about, um, she mentioned about us being able to eat a balanced diet and maybe she was like that. If, if they give you chips, They'll put for you a few veggs. And then maybe you need more of those. Is it, it, could it be a good thing that I can buy the chips but also go back home and take like more vegetables or also I can add on fruits? What could be, because like I'm saying all this in the sense of most of us are not ready to let go now of the street foods. But I'm looking at other avenues that we can use to complement our health eating. Yes, it would be better you buy the chips and do... Let and me first have this caller. Hello? 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 Thank you for watching Beth and TV if you are... Hello? Yes, good, yeah, good evening. Good evening to you. How are you? Fine, thank you. My name is Sharon. Sharon, where are you calling us from? Yes, I'm calling from Bukerere, Mokona. Thank you very much for the show. <laughs> You're welcome, Sharon. Uh, I have two good questions. One, I, I really, I'm really, really, really interested in hearing more about, uh, you know, salt. That? Uh, I, for example, already do know that I'm not. Uh, a lot of intake of salt is bad because it's introduced to what's already been mentioned in the studio. But I just like Alice, it's as if you just touched her, not surface on it, but I'd like to hear a little more on why is salt, what does salt do inside the body, then leads to diseases such as hypertension. And then two, okay. The issue of, uh, you know, the oil uh, street vendors use to cook. Um, I must again ask very brief. It's, he said something to the effect it's broken down into certain compounds. But then now what I'd like to know is what is the correlation between this compound and the diseases they cause in the body and kill. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Sharon, and greetings to people that are in Mukono, those that are watching Betha and TV. Thank you so much for choosing Betha and TV. She's asked very, very interesting questions. That is about the salt intake and also the fats, the oils that are being used onto the street. So let's start with the salt part of it. She wants to understand what does exactly salt do in our bodies and how does it contribute to the non-communicable diseases, especially hypertension and DM. Okay, so salt, salt is a compound, it's made of sodium chloride. So in our body, we have this component, this mineral, sodium. It's already within our body. It's found within the extracellular compartment of the body. So blood is part of the extracellular compartment. Now, when you take in excess salt, it is going to add onto this sodium that is already within what? Your body. body. So when that sodium is a lot in your blood, it is going to draw water to itself because, you know, salt always attracts water to itself. So when it draws water to itself, your blood volume is going to increase. Now, um... Okay, uh, just a bit there. Let me get this caller. Hello? Hello? Yes, please. Your name's and where are you calling us from? My name is Ngorobe Robert. Your name is Robert? Ngorobe Robert. Ngorobe Robert. You are watching Betha and TV or since it there was several. The name is Robert Yosinzi Dewa. Okay, so sorry, uh, you can try to call us again. Okay, and there's a good double zero TV. Oh, so we'll look at Wanga or to worry that I'm to get a Zaganya Bulonji. A two bad to Charlie Kushibuza Charles Sharon Okova Mukonga Buza or Munyu Gukola Chikum Vidi Jaffe Okulatera and Wadenga. Pressure, nesukali, leka ati today wa anesti atunyo nyole, omunye shegu kola. Yes, so I was still saying, when, when that sodium is in your blood, it's going to draw more water to itself within your blood. So that will bring about your blood volume to increase. Mm -hmm. Now, when the heart is pumping, it will, con it will continue pumping at the pressure it was pumping at. But now, 
the issue is the blood volume has increased. So even though it uses the same force to pump, because of the increased blood volume that you have, your blood pressure is going to increase. And like that, so it will bring about high blood pressure. Um, then uh, the question of fats. Fats, yeah. So these, these, these compounds in the fats that have over been used, I could say they are carcinogens. They become carcinogens. These, 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 um, these are things that cause cancer. They promote the growth of cancer cells within your body. So when you take in fat that has been overused, it has those compounds, and those compounds will promote the growth of cancer cells in your body, and that's how you'll get uh, an NCD-like cancer. Thank you so much. I think now we, we might not wonder so much why we have the increasing cases of cancer, apparently in our uh, maybe in Uganda and even worldwide, we're having cancer as the leading cause of death. So that means we should be very, very careful on what we eat. Like I said, you are exactly what you eat. But never the case, as Bethan TV and as the nutrition sport, we're encouraging ourselves to be very conscious with how we eat and where we eat from because we want to transform our lives health wise. So I want hello? us to have like a hello. Yes, this is Robert from Singolove from Busia. Oh, yes, Robert from Busia. How are you? So, I was asking. Yes, please. Is there a law that governs street food? If yes, how does it operate? Thank you so much, Robert. First thing, uh, decrease the volume of your TV. Okay, thank you so much, but I'm so very much delighted to get to understand that even people in Busia are watching Betha and TV. That is really good news. But thank you so much. I'll be going to tackle the bit of, um, is there a particular law that is governing this street? What? Do we have it? As nutritionists, do you think it should be there or you like need to move because they cannot afford to have things done in a particular way? Having this one caller, hello? Hello? Okay, if you want to call us, the number is over the screen, 0786050762. You can also send us a message on WhatsApp on the very same number, but you can also reach out to us on our different social Hello. media platforms. Hello? Um, my name is Senyange Daniel Pasco. Yes, Daniel. Where are you watching us from? Um, and I studied from a retail school and I offer biology. Okay. Uh, my question is about the fact, um, may you clarify on how the facts are literally small and literally too much, the danger in between. So you want us to clarify the danger in between a lot and little, too much and too little fats? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Daniel. Any other caller? The number is 786050762. Hello? Okay. Um, let's get to answer um, Daniel and then we also go back to Robert about whether there are um, policies that are put in place to govern this. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between too high and too low fats? Um, too high will there's, there's really, there's not really distinction, but fats don't really have a recommended intake. You should just figure it out. When you see your body's, you're over becoming, yeah, you know, massive and <laughs> then you know you're taking too much. But on the other end, too little fat, um, when you take in too little fat, your body, your hormones, your body cannot produce your hom the hormones properly, let's say reproductive hormones. So you will find that maybe you have issues in that end. Then if you take in little fat, you may not be able to get the required vitamins, the fat-soluble vitamins, for example, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E. So you'll be getting deficiencies that are being caused by, the, by lack of those vitamins. Thank you so much. Uh, one more last caller. Hello. Thank you so much. Hello. 
Hello. Good evening. Your name is and where are you watching us from? Well, my name is Raymond. Yes, Raymond. This is Bethan TV and is the nutrition spot. Yeah, my question is about... Uh, well, I'm a student at Fort Porto College of Health Sciences. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So my question is about low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. The difference between the two? Yeah. Okay. How how uh, how best can you describe them? And the other one is about uh, how can you relate BMI to body fat? How can you relate? Relate BMI to body fat. To body fat. Yeah. You said you are Raymond from Kawempe. Hey, Raymond from Kawempe. Thank you so much, Raymond. Raymond is asked about the high density lipids and then the low density lipids and then also the relationship between the BMI and the body fat. Yes, so um, lipoproteins, they are made up of lipids and uh, proteins. So you know that proteins have a higher density than uh, lipids. So when someone says high density, it means it has a higher proportion of proteins than lipids. Lipids are fats, you want lipids are fats. It's the same thing. So low density, it means they have more of the, of the, um, of the fat than the protein. So a high density lipoprotein is the one that will carry healthy fat around your body. So, well, the low density lipoprotein will carry unhealthy fat, let's, let's say cholesterol. It will be the one to carry it around your body. Okay. So that's the main distinction I can give. Thank you so much. I think, Raymond, you've gotten that well and clear. And also, what could be the relationship between the BMI, the body mass index, and also the body fat? Um, body, body mass index, it's, uh, it usually measures body composition. So fat is part of our body composition. So um, when, when your BMI is over the normal, it, it just it states that maybe you're overweight, obese. It means that, in fact, I could say you're too fat. <laughs> I could say that. Not overweight. No. It means you have a high fat content in your body. Mm -hmm. If your mm -hmm. BMI is, is, high. is beyond the normal. If it is less, it means you have low fat. Low, okay. Your body is, the composition of your body is below the normal. I could say that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, our time is just running so fast and we believe and we would want to, I think I'm not receiving any calls right about now, but if you have any comments, any contributions, you can just put them on our different social medias. That is on our Facebook and also on YouTube. But you can also put anything on our WhatsApp number that is 0786050762 and, and let us know what are your thoughts are. We encourage you all to maybe probably have an open mind on this because this is not something you can wake up and be like, I'm done. Maze okulia chipsizo kukubo, maze okulia mkukubo kukubo, maze okulia lolexe chikomando vichitu wala tugeende shafii kitoja kere ncho gambi like I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But maybe it is a process. And there is a caller that was asking, do we have policies, do we have uh, laws that govern people that uh, uh, sell this other, okay, these all street foods uh, maybe to people. Do we have policies in place? Do we have laws that govern how they are supposed to do all this? Um, I think the point of street foods is that there are no rules. <laughs> there are no rules. That's why <laughs> you see KCCA is always running with these people. So rules, rules really apply to establishments where they can, you know, they have standard operating procedures, they mm. are governed, they have license. But street foods are, there are no rules. You, if you have paid your rent, if you can produce, if you have customers, that's all you need. But there's, there's no operation. If it was there, I think most of these places wouldn't be there because they are not up to standard. Um, they may not have the right equipment, the right handling, and uh, all that in mind, there are no policies for street food. Thank you so much, Ernest. Uh, back to you, Anita. What are your uh, take-home messages if it comes to the relationship between uh, the street foods and the non-communicable diseases? My take-home would be we limit the amount of street foods we, we eat. So we should go more for the food, the matoke. We go for the sweet potatoes, the Irish potatoes. 
you have to try to control yourself from having those street foods and dwell more on the food that is being pelt because it, ha it is more healthier than the street foods because they have a lot of dust, the oil, the handling, the packaging, like everything. So it's better you have food prepared at home than eating from street foods. You just have to limit. We always emphasize the components of food security and then we keep saying food has to be available, food has to be accessible, it should be utilized. And I feel like people that are do street foods are drawing the services closer to people to be able <laughs> to be like uh, utilized well and also maybe easily accessed. But Ernest, in that very context of food security, what do you have to say to both the consumer and also this other person that is selling the food? Well, the first point I want to make is that street foods are cheap at that point, but they are more expensive in the long run because you're going to have to treat yourself these non-communicable diseases. Uh, I think people know that when you're diabetic, you spend a lot of money because you really have to buy a lot of medicine. And um, yeah, I think that's what I can give on that. Thank you so much, Anis, and thank you so much, Anita. We believe that if me and you are able to understand the risks of the street foods and how they impact our health, they really don't do so much good, not really. Like we said, we feel that it's convenient. We feel like I can easily just take a board of 1K and I can get to somewhere where there is food in the market or something. But, and we feel like it's not time consuming. We feel like we've not, we're not really putting in work. By the end of the day, you'll put in the work, you like it or not, and you'll only put in the work when you're already in the hospital trying to fight for your life. There was something that was over social media of late and someone was like, we always give health foods to people that are already sick in hospitals and we give unhealthy foods to people that are at home, people that are not sick. So think about that. How about you eat health foods before you get into the hospital than wanting to eat them when you're already in the hospital. This is Bethan TV. We are for health. We believe that we can transform our lives through what we eat. And that is why the Nutrition Sport is here to encourage you that you can still make an informed choice and decision if it comes to what you eat. My name is Giftina Kayinga and this happens every single Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. I want to wish you the best of the evening and a good night.